We're going to be talking about shutting down the refrigeration system, pumping the refrigerant into the outdoor coil so that we can make a repair to the line set or to the indoor coil. The first thing we're going to do is close off the liquid line. Close that all the way down. Run the equipment in the cooling mode. For most brands, you're going to be jumpering R to Y and R to O, or turn it on at the thermostat in the cooling mode and allow the refrigerant to start pumping into the outdoor unit. The next step as we watch the low pressure drop down to zero, be ready with the wrench so that you can quickly shut off the gas line. We do not want it to go into a vacuum on that compressor. Electricity will arc in a vacuum and damage the windings. When doing repairs, sometimes we're unable to pump all the refrigerant into the outdoor unit. So we have to pull that refrigerant out while we do the repair and then put it back in when we're done with that repair. Or maybe you're decommissioning a system. We have to be EPA compliant and make sure that we follow the rules of de minimis release. When using recovery machines, become familiar with how to use it. Usually we are pulling liquid refrigerant out first, then we're pulling the rest in vapor form. When we put into a uh, refrigerant recovery cylinder, we want to weigh that so that we know how much came out, then look at the name plate and make sure that we put the proper amount in, add for the line set if necessary. With my refrigerant tanks, I always mark what type of refrigerants in that. I don't want to mix refrigerants. Even if I empty this tank all the way, I may get some mineral oil sitting at the bottom of that tank with the R22. I don't want to mix that with polyester oil that comes with R410 and some of the other refrigerants. Even if you think you've pulled all the gas out, that mineral oil, when used on another refrigerant, may give you a false positive when you go to turn it in, saying that that's a mixed gas because that residual oil will throw off the test and now you get charged instead of getting a check. That's a big deal. So make sure you keep your tanks separate, keep them marked, and keep a proper documentation. It's also very good practice to use a filter dryer when you're putting refrigerant from a tank back into a system. That way you're, you're filtering it, you're making sure that that is a dry refrigerant, it's nice and clean, and we're not introducing any contaminants into that homeowner's system. 